members on the platform such as this. Of course, we would rather it be face-to-face, -face, but alhamdulillah, we look at the wisdom um, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has above all of us, in which right now we are forced to, uh, you know, build community even despite not being amongst each other. So alhamdulillah, we, I was given a, a topic that I think is very important for these particular times. And the topic is really, you know, when we think about the times that we are living in now, we are forced to parent more than we've ever parented before. For example, people are now, parents are now forced to become homeschool teachers. Find, they're finding themselves very frustrated with their teachers. We were so used to just dropping our, our, our children off to the masjid, to the school, and, you know, and then going about our way. But now we're forced to now appreciate our teachers who have to babysit our children. And we thank them for their time, their energy. Now, us parents, we see how difficult it is that it's not an easy job. We open up. These are some ayat that perhaps we're going to understand more than ever. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu, la tulhikum amwalukum. وَلَا أَوْلَادُكُمْ عَنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَمَنْ يَفْعَلْ ذَلِكَ فَأُولَائِكَ هُمُ الْخَاسِرُونَ We're understanding this more than ever during this time, this particular ayah in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, Oh, you believe, let not your properties or your children divert you from the remembrance of Allah. And whosoever does that, then they are the losers. Here, children, mention alongside wealth. Okay, while Allah mentioned Abdurrahim, young Salafina, alongside our wealth, we equate wealth a lot of times with something that can lead you straight into Jahannam if you abuse it, if you use it the wrong way. Now our children are placed alongside our wealth, and they can be a means to forgiving a loss to Jahannahu wa Taala. It's important making sure that the parents and the children understand that Allah keeps authority in the household during these times. We have an ayah, another ayah of Qur'an that we're going to understand more than ever during these times. إِنَّمَا أَمْوَالُكُمْ وَأَوْلَادُكُمْ فِتْنَةً وَاللَّهُ عِنْدَهُ أَجْرٌ عَظِيمٌ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions your wealth and your children are only uh, fitna. Here, Allah again mentioned the children alongside the wealth, right? And he says that our children, sickness, right? They can be a trial. They can be a means of, of difficulty. And we are real, realizing that now that we have to make sure our households are under control. And our reality, something that we have to really understand during this particular time, is that we are raising children, but also they're products of the social landscape. They're products of liberalism. It's important for us to understand that. Our, our children are products of liberalism. As a matter of fact, when they look at television, most of the television shows have um, a representation from the homosexual community. Our, our shows are very violent. Representing our children are products of that. Our children are products of social media. Our children are products of TikTok, um, Instagram. Facebook is old. So TikTok and Instagram, they're products of this, right? I think it's called uh, uh, TikTok. But they're products of, uh, of this. They're being produced by this. A lot of times we don't understand that we're raising also products of uh, liberalism, something for us to really understand. But this should not deter our mission. So, for example, the Prophet Sallallahu which still remains, سَبْعَةٌ يُذِلُّهُمُ اللَّهُ فِي دِلِّهِ يَوْمَ لَا بِلَّا إِلَّا ذِلُّهُ That's the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Allah will give shade to seven people on the day, and there will be no shade but his. And he mentions, وَشَابْضُونَ نَشَعَ فِي عِبَادَةِ رَبِّي a youth that has been brought up and worshiping his Lord. Even though our children are products of social media, they still can be brought up worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't be discouraged. Parents, 
do not be discouraged. Even though our children are products of liberalism, when they walk down the street, they see people dressed all types of ways. They see all types of things, right? This should not deter our mission from producing also children who are brought up, raised in Islam, who are raised worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This word shabab for youth, also within this word shubu, which means to ignite flame, to set blaze, right? So our youth can be young flames. If we don't get this flame under control, under control, it's, it'll be out of control, burning up everything, setting ablaze everything within its path. So our strategy should be geared towards being in control, but not being controlling. Let me say this again. Being in control, but not being controlling. And this is important. Because the number one thing we have to show mercy, as the Prophet ﷺ he said, ليس منا من لم يرحم صغيرنا ويعرف حق كبيرنا. He says that anyone who does not show mercy to our children, nor acknowledge the rights of our older elders, is not of us. So we, this is in line with being in control, but not being controlling. Some of us are tyrants in the household. And we want to control every movement of our of our children, and we end up losing them. We've seen in America throughout the years of experience that we've seen Muslim families raising children right here. But we've seen it's two different communities, right? We have, we've seen one part of our community who are too lenient, way too lenient. No Islam in the household. Uh, they don't. Uh, orientate their children towards the proper way to worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No ta'aleem in the household, no teaching, no good examples, no prayer being performed in the household. But then you have where parents are too rigid, okay? And that also destroys the child. There's no mercy, too much rigidity, where everything you try to control all the movements of your children, it does not work. And we've seen this throughout the years. We have right here, the first thing I want to mention for us is priority, right? Prioritization. It's making sure that our children are prioritized. Our children must be the priority. When we are at home during this quarantine, remember your children are remain the priority. Do not Put your children in front of that TV and just allow this liberal TV to raise them, right? And get enough of that. You have to make sure that you're parenting. For the first time, many of us are forced to really parent. So we have to make sure that we're prioritizing our, our children. So we have right here, Aisha Radiallahu Anha. She reported a woman came to me alone with her two daughters asking for charity. But she found nothing with me except one day. So a woman came to Aisha radiallahu anha asking for charity, and she only was able to give her one day. Aisha radiallahu anha, she said, I gave it to her, and she divided it between her two daughters. She herself did not eat any of the date, but she divided this date between her two daughters. And she went without tasting any of the date. This right here it shows us that we have to prioritize our children. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam got word of this, and he mentions whoever is tested with daughters and treats them well, then they will be their shield for hellfire. So we realize that during this particular time, how we treat our children during this quarantine time, this is our opportunity to get closer to Allah or to put, place our situation, place ourselves in a situation where we're getting further away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Take this as an opportunity to get closer to a loss of kind of what happened. Prioritization. Number one, connection. Number two, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and we look at the hadith, we pay attention, Kun fi dunya ka'annaka gharib aw aabi wa sabil, right? Be in this world as if you're a stranger or a traveler on the path, right? We pay attention to that part of the hadith, but before this part is mentioned, 
It mentions that Abdullah ibn Omar, he said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, before the Messenger of Allah gave him the information, from the dunya ka'anna ka gharib, or abhi to sabir, be in this world like a stranger or traveling on the path, he said he took hold of my shoulder. He took hold of my shoulder, right? After the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he meant to be. He meant to be. And he took hold of my shoulders, right? So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, connection, connection, affection. You see this connection? Him not just speaking to Ibn Umar, but he's grabbing his shoulder. This is his connection. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, one of the young uh, companions, Abu Umair, he asked him, what happened to An-Nughayr? An-Nughayr was his bird. Was the Prophet interested in his bird? I don't know. Perhaps not. There's a lot of things going on in the community. But he met him where he was at. The little boy was interested in the bird. So the Prophet sallallahu how is your bird? A lot of times as parents, we fail to connect with our children. This is time to connect. For example, I dislike... My daughter loves a group. I don't understand it. I dislike it, and I hate to admit it. But I think this is a safe space for all of us. But she likes a group, BTS. Perhaps we're dealing with some of the same things. Perhaps we need a, a, a parent meeting where we can discuss this. So I condemn her all the time for who she likes. No, she has her own phone, so she's able to look up different things, right? And you have to understand, for us, I have to now show a little interest. What are you listening to? What is this going on? I, I need to, because I'm meeting her with she's at. I don't necessarily agree, but I know that it's just a phase. Inshallah, make do out for me that it's just a phase. So we have connection, right? Affection. We have affection. So our, our sons, our daughters need affection. Fasting now. The father of the family kissed his daughter before she went to bed. He was so the son's affection. Somebody needs to mute their phone. I think that's uh, Nadia, I believe. Hi. There's no mute. I'm going to go ahead and mute them, but it's, uh, there's no mute. It takes a second for it to mute. Thank you. Okay, okay, no problem. Okay, so we have affection, connection, affection. Okay, prioritization, uh, connection, affection. That our sons need affection, our daughters need affection. During this time of quarantine, make sure this is a time that's very traumatic. Children need affection. They ask the Prophet about keeping the sons. The Prophet of Allah, whoever the <laughs> Others with mercy will not be treated with mercy. Show affection to your your children during this particular time. Right? And right here we have also education, which is orientation. Orienting your children so, towards a certain direction. Remember the saying, it is very hard, not taught. Stop trying to preach to your children. They're not paying attention. Don't give no hour football. They're not trying to hear that. Right? Don't be, don't give a, don't give a two hour lecture to your teenage children especially. They're not listening. They need to see your example. You have to lead by example in your household. And you have to find out, find small, uh, spurts or small times. 15 minutes, 30 minutes at the most where you have a tight lean. With your, uh, with your family. The Prophet Sallallahu taught his daughter, Fa'al-Fima, radiallahu anha, how to zikr, right? And it mentions in one narration that he says to her, he says, say in the morning, glory be to Allah, right? I begin with praise of him. There is no power but in him. What Allah wills comes to pass, and what he does not will does not come to pass. I know that Allah has power over all things. And he comprehends everything with knowledge. Whoever says it in the morning will be guarded until the evening. And whoever says it in the evening will be guarded until the morning. This is the uh, dua that the Prophet he's teaching his child, he's teaching his daughter. The next one we have is 
competence and confidence. We have to make sure we're instilling competence and confidence in our children. We know the story about Ernest is in Malik. We said that served the prophet for like some for ten years and he never said oh or expressed condemnation with me. It expressed disgust, right? To me. And he never said anything I had not done. You didn't do this, but you didn't do that, right? Why didn't you do it? Or about something I had done. Why did you do that? He never condemned him. He never rebuked him, right? And our, our children, everything is haram. Haram this, haram that, haram this. And what happens is they don't feel competent in the deen. They feel like I'm not good enough in this deen. So I'm going to go somewhere where I feel competent, where I'm accepted. So make sure in your household it doesn't become where you have uh, a haram police precinct in your household. Make sure during this quarantine time that you allow your, your children, don't traumatize your children during this time by constantly condemning uh, them, giving them self-esteem. We have the, the, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, I heard Ali, radiallahu anhu, say that the Prophet Sallallahu commanded Abdullah ibn Mas'ud to climb a tree and bring him something from it. His companions looked at Abdullah's size and laughed at his thinness. They laughed at how thin he was. And the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Why are you laughing? Abdullah's foot is heavier in the balance than the mountain of Uhud. He's giving him competence. He's giving him confidence and self-esteem. Make sure that you're giving and stealing in your children self-esteem. Don't walk around the house condemning people. Haram this, haram that. Turn this up. I don't like this. I don't like that. Make sure you create a space which has compassion in it and also uh, uh, mercy in it. And you're not constantly um, harping off a, a person or getting on a person because of their weaknesses. Find their strengths and mention that. Give them compliments on their strengths, not on their uh, on, on their uh, weaknesses. The, the prophet from Allah said, he whispered in the ear of his daughter, Fatima, let me know about her. Oh, Fatima, does it not please you to be the leader of the believing women or the leader of the women of this ummah, giving her confidence? Does it not please you that you're the leading woman of this ummah? Give your children, whisper in their ears something that's going to lift up their self-esteem and not bring them down, right? In closing, I want to mention just a few things that we can do around, um, you know, the house. And these are, uh, you know, things that we can perhaps, very basic things, right? Make sure you go outside. Don't stay hooked up in the house, right? It becomes a cell, a prison cell. Take a family walk together. Do an art project together. Learn how to do something new with each other together. Like I said before, don't preach, but reserve time for Tallinn, where you have a small amount of time set where you all circle up, circle together as a family, and share, share hadith, and reflect on it, comment on it, read a section of a book of hadith or tafsir, and reflect on it, and comment on it, and allow your children to comment on it. This is important. That uh, during this time, turn your houses into a, a learning center. And we have to make sure that we are also having structure. Have structure. Listen to this statement. If the environment is chaotic and religious expectations are ambiguous and inconsistent, religious competence is likely unattainable. Make sure you have structure in your household. Make sure your, uh, your, your household is structured. And lastly, Make du'a, constantly make du'a during these particular times. The du'a that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he made, Allahumma akfir ma'lahu wa waladahu wa barik lah. So he says, O oh Allah, grant him a lot of money and many children and bless him. Making du'a for a young companion and we have to make du'a for our, our young people, our children and our household. And a collective du'a that you can make as a family. I want us all to repeat this simple du'a. Repeat after me, and we'll close out. Rabbi, everybody say Rabbi. Najini, Najini, Rabbi Najini. Rabbi Najini. Wa ahli, wa ahli, mimma 
مما يعملون يعملون اوكي ربي نجني واهلي مما يعملون This dua, very beautiful dua that we can recite collectively as a household and learn together as a household. My Lord, save me and my family from what they do. This is the dua of Lord, alayhi salam. My Lord, save me and my family from what they do. In closing, everyone take it easy. Don't panic. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in full control. This is a musibah. That was writ- written that Allah had knowledge of prior. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He doesn't want us to panic, as Allah mentions in the Quran, that these things were written in a book before He brought it into existence. And this is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is for Allah something that is easy. Allah is more powerful. He's more powerful than the coronavirus, than COVID 19. This is us being realigned. Our faith is being, is being realigned right now. So be patient. Be closer to your family. For now I'm reading how parents are abusing children more than ever. You have more divorces than ever, but not us. We, this is going to bring our, our families closer together. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us and our families from what they do. Thank you all. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon all of you all. We want to make dua for, for each other during these times. But well, remember, we are part of a community, and, and alhamdulillah, I, I love all of you all. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon all of you all. I don't know if there's any questions, but uh, if there are, I don't know what type of platform, uh, what, the, what the platform allows, but I'm here uh, for any questions. Jazakum Allah khair, Imam uh, for the reminder and for the uh, valid points in these testing times where families are having to review and revise and think how they um, you know, deal with their family and the situation. We do have a Q&A platform. Um, we ask people to raise their hands and then uh, we go through those in sequence, inshallah. So whoever has a question right now, please raise your hand and I will open it up for uh, Imam Safir, inshallah. We have a question by Abdullah Ali. Go ahead, Abdullah, inshallah. Go ahead, inshallah. Can you hear me? Yeah, you can. Go ahead. Ask your question. Yeah, I hear you. Uh, just blessings. Uh, it's not going to be able to take your time out with your family to be with you. And just oh, yeah, I'm 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 how is the uh, Ibarallah holding on and things like that? Do you need um, volunteers or help? How's the question? Alhamdulillah. Everything is going good. You know, as we, um, we have programs that have to continue. So, for example, we have Uh, our food transfer every Saturday, so we're there every Saturday at uh, 9 a.m. We need volunteers. You all can always come uh, on Saturdays. Bring it. If you come, bring a glove and a mask, right? So we do our social distancing there, but we're also uh, we're feeding the people. We're uh, providing groceries for the com- over uh, 150 community members every Saturday. So, um, and then also we have our, our, our houses. So um, we definitely need, you know, um, You know, people to be able to, uh, to give. We don't have our, our community. We were relying on the money that come in for Salat Jumu'ah. So this is a trial for us. So, you know, um, islahla.org. Alhamdulillah. Support the community. But this is the Alhamdulillah is Islamic Center of Hawthorne. Make sure you all prioritize that community. If that's a community that you frequent, that's your community. But also, don't forget about Islam LA. It's going to be like right up the street. Oh, uh, yeah, my bad. I meant to say Islam. I meant to say Islam. No, no, it's all the same. In Dalla, you know, Masjid Dalla, it'll always be Masjid Dalla also. All right. Salam alaikum. Good to hear from you. Wow, that's not good. I mean, I mean, thank you so much. Okay. I think we also have a question from SS. I'm not sure who that is, but go ahead, inshallah. 
some people use their initials. Unfortunately, we don't know who they are. Okay. No problem. Yeah, you raise your hand. Um, you raise your hand. Go ahead and, and ask your question. Inshallah, SF. Initials SS. You have a question. Your mic is open. Go ahead and ask, inshallah. If not, we'll move on. Jazakallah khair. I guess not. Okay. Okay. I don't think there's any questions in the chat either. Okay, let me see. Okay. There's something I'm trying to say, Safi, man. Yeah, okay, so there's Hamid has, inshallah, a question, and a Fatima. They both raised their hands, so we're going to go ahead and start with Fatima, inshallah, and then we'll move on to Hamid. Go ahead, Fatima. And if you... Yeah, go ahead, you're Yeah, we can hear you. Go ahead, inshallah. Okay. So my question is, you know, sometimes uh, our kids uh, follow from, I try to uh, YouTube follow us and stuff. And I give my son the opportunity to, you know, watch whatever he wants to on YouTube, but I kind of sit next to him and see exactly what he's watching. And when I realize it's inappropriate, I intervene. But I don't, like you said, you don't want to be controlling, but you want to be in control. Yeah. How do you distinguish those lines whereby you don't feel like you are always interfering with what he's watching? But I just want to make sure that it's the content appropriate. So I may be sitting there reading or doing something of my own, but at the same time, I'm keeping my ear open to what he's watching. Is that a bad thing to do? No, I think I think it's important um, because you know these you know times have changed. You know, so for example, you have these 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 time periods. Uh, for example, when when homes. They, they were one room at one point. So imagine when homes, they began building rooms. But imagine when the press, printing press came out, and then now people could go somewhere and read a book by their, themselves. So oral tradition was, was huge at one point. But now they have a book from the printing press they can read on their own. But now these phones, they have entire computers, and we have no idea what's taking place on this computer. Uh, what I'm uh, hearing from especially educators, for example, one principal said he was horrified by what he witnessed on people's phone, on his children's phone in the high schools, right? So what he advised is that the children, they need to, they have to be monitored in which the parents need to know their search, what they're searching, right? Uh, the, the parents need to know, yeah, they need to know. Um, with social platforms that they're on, social uh, uh, media platforms that they're on, right? And, and and this is very important. And if you find your child on a website he's not supposed to be on or that she's not supposed to be on, you have discussions. You don't come down on them hard to where they feel condemned and they feel like, you know, that you traumatize them. But you have discussions on why you should, they shouldn't visit that, uh, that particular uh, website. And be proactive. Have these discussions first. And then you have to trust in the law and then trust your children are going to make the right decision. So this is where the families have to gather up and have these discussions, have these talims in the household, have these learning uh, discussions where you talk about the Islamic position without bring, being too preachy, okay? But I would check the phone every one day or every two days. You know, you have to be strategic. And let them know, hey, if I'm going to pay this bill, then I need to, to see at least what you're uh, searching to make sure that it's appropriate. Okay? So I hope that was, uh, you know, helpful. Uh, uh, yes, it was. Okay. Thank you. Actually, I asked the person he had said, and he showed me his Instagram. He said, Mom, you follow me on Instagram. So, yeah. I don't do anything bad. I don't know, but I still have to ask a question. So thank you. Yeah, that's good. Alhamdulillah. He sounds like, he, he sounds like he, he's a good son. He allows his mother to follow him on Instagram. That's huge. He's, he's, you've taught him well. Alhamdulillah. I think he's ready for this, this world. It has a lot 
and it's throwing out the children, but he's ready. He has the tools, inshallah. Jazakum Allah khair. Thank you. Um, the, in the chat, um, uh, Hazar Nasrini, she's asking, Hazar, uh, are you asking about a specific age? That's important, too. Um, what, what's the age of the uh, the child? That's that's very important. So I don't know. I mean, um, did she ask that for, uh, for Fatima? I think she's inquiring in general if there's probably a certain age where you do these things or, or not. Yeah, okay. So I think it, it, it's very important. And, and this is why, you know, I want to emphasize that the masjid is there to reinforce what is already being taught in the home. Listen to, to this. The masjid is there to reinforce what is already being taught in the home. The imam is the reminder, reminding what is already being taught in the home. But we do it the reverse way. We treat the home, we remind what's being taught in the masjid. So this becomes the, the primary means of Islam. No, it's in the home. Make sure the home, that you set up home, households where you have your learning circles. Again, without being uh, too preachy. But the masjid, the Islamic school, reinforces what is taught in the home. The problem is, is that parents, they, it's no Islam in the home, and then they want to drop the child off to the school for all their Islam. No, that, that's not the, that's, that's the wrong, that's, that's a terrible model that hasn't worked. Jazakumullah khair for this uh, great distinction and, and uh, awareness point. I, I do personally, and I'm sure that a lot of other people observe that. People do expect that the masjid uh, or the school will raise their children for them. Yeah. That, that's a great point. Jazakumullah khair. Hamid, oh, yeah. Hamid had a question. Um, go ahead and ask her a question, Hamid. Okay. Jazakumullah khair, Brother Jihad. Uh, it's not much actually a question, it's just, uh, uh, most of my question, uh, uh, you already answered. Uh, but it, it, is this plague, if you can name it, is it, is it the same plague as that it was prescribed, uh, upon, like, nations before us, or is it like a new kind of plague? You know, just for us to test that Muslims and non-Muslims. Yeah. We don't, we don't know. You know, we don't know. I, I mean, we, we have, for example, we do have the examples in the, in the Quran, uh, but we can't uh, classify it as it's a musibah. You know, it's, it's a test. And, and what we look, how we look at it is that for the believers, uh, that when Allah wants good for a person, He, he puts them in a test, right? He, he tests them, right? He puts them through a trial. This is an opportunity for the believers to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told a woman who, she said that uh, there's no blessings for this fever. A woman was in a sick bag and she was going through a fever. She said there's no blessings for this fever. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told her, don't curse the fever, right? Don't curse the fever. So what I would say to all of us is that COVID-19, coronavirus, is not the enemy here, right? A lot of times it is our disobedience. But also, this is a beautiful opportunity to, for us to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is not the ultimate evil. There is a lot of mercy in this. The Prophet is telling the people, don't curse your sickness. Don't curse this trial that we're going through. This is the trial that's going to get many of us on our prayers. Uh, for example, one, one of the, uh, the brothers, he said, this is the first, he said, I, I've left um, uh, taking intoxicants, and now I'm praying because of COVID-19. I'm coming to you that. So this is an opportunity for us to earn reward and closer to Allah behind the Lord Adam. Jazakum Allah khair again for a, uh, a great point and a reminder that um, everything, albeit it's in a, uh, it's in a uh, bad-looking package, what lies underneath is usually a great rahmah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, an opportunity for us to come back to him, inshallah. Yes. Yeah. Any, other, any other questions from the audience? Please raise your hand. 
it says, uh, Abraham has a question. Go ahead, Abraham. Please ask a question. Okay. He's saying you've got answered. That's fine. Okay. Any other, <laughs> any other questions or comments? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. May I? Yeah. Go ahead, inshallah. Okay. Uh, Brother Jihad, what was your last, uh, last dua? Allahumma. Uh, Oh, Rabbi Najini wa Ahli Mimma Yamanu. Oh, okay. Who was reference to, 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 who was the reference to? Oh, Luke. Oh, to the Luke. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, the Prophet Luke, alayhi salam, he, of course we know he's around people who they're having, oh, yeah, uh, yeah we, we know the story of Luke, right? Yeah, so I, I, I just didn't see the the the, the contact I got uh, on on the, on the last. I thought like, is, is it implied on, on to what, what is going on now? That's what that, that's why you know what's going yeah. on now is it, is it? That's a beautiful dua for us to make now too. You know, because we, we want us and our family safe from what people do. Exactly. You know? Yeah, because uh, what what found in my uh, in my mind uh, is uh, an ayah from the Quran: "Rabbi, ma tuliyani ma yuadun, Rabbi, fala tajalni ma alqawmi." No, no. That's all. You are just a comment. Thank you, Lafiz. Waalaikum. Alhamdulillah. Okay. Inshallah, if there's no more questions, I invite Dr. Jawad Dzani to make his announcement for tonight. I can go. You can go. Not yet. No, 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 not yet. We want to. We want to have a dua, a finishing dua, inshallah. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. I'll make this uh, real fast, inshallah. Uh, one, uh, I'm not going to repeat the uh, announcement of, of yesterday, but uh, as I said yesterday, is we're going to have a start having every Thursday night a question and a questions and answers by Sheikh Hamdi. So. But if you need to have a question, please submit it to um, uh, our email, which is info at ichla.org. Info at ichla.org. So we'll collect the questions, and inshallah, every Thursday night, there's going to be Q&A by uh, Sheikh Hamdi. That's a new, inshallah, new, uh, uh, new in the program. And, uh, and as we said, um, inshallah, we're going to have Brother Hassan Ayloush Wednesday night. We're going to have uh, Dr. Ahsan Sayyid Saturday night. We're going to have uh, a new, which is Dr. Uh, Marwa Azad on Sunday night. We're going to have uh, brother Dr. Ahmed Khaldi Monday night. Jum'a, uh, virtual Jum'a. The khutbah will be by Dr. Amjad Porsh, inshallah, this Jum'a. So, inshallah, we're trying our best to get as uh, many people as possible. And inshallah, hopefully, we get the benefit from all these great uh, because Jihad, appreciate it. Imam Jihad, if you can close for us with a uh Nua, inshallah will be appreciated. Okay. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. <laughs>